Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Krishna
Vasudev, who is situated everywhere. That is the meaning of that mantra, which was the Maha Mantra in the Dwarpa Yuga. <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 2, How Parikshit Received the Age of Kali. Sautarasya tanayam upayema iravatim janma jaya dims chaturas tasyam upadayat sutan sautarasya tanayam Upayema iravitim janma jaya dims chataras tasyam upadayat sutan sarutarasya tanayam upayema iravitim janma jayam dims chataras Tasyam upadayat sutan. want to try. Sa he Uttarasya of King Uttara Tanayam daughter Upayeme no Upayeme <laughs> married Iravatim Iravati Janmajaya Adin Headed by Maharaj Janmejaya. Chatara 4. Tasyam in her. Upadayat. Pagat. Sutan. Sons. Hmm. Translation King Parikshit married the daughter of King Uttara and begot four sons headed by Maharaj Janmejaya. Hmm. Purport. Maharaj Uttara was the son of Virat and material uncle of Maharaj Parikshit. I'm sorry, maternal uncle of Maharaj Parikshit. <laughs> I guess he was both. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Iravati, being the daughter of Maharaj Uttara, was the cousin sister of Maharaj Parikshin. But cousin brothers and sisters were allowed to get married if they did not belong to the same gotra or family. 
in the Vedic system of marriage, the importance of the gotra of family was stressed. Arjuna also married Subhadra, although she was his maternal cousin sister. <laughs> so now a description of Janmanjaya. One of the Rajarsi kings and the famous son of Maharaj Parikshit, his mother's name was Iravati, and according to some Madhravati, Madhrava, Maharaj Janvijaya begot two sons of the name Jantik, Jantaknika and Sankurnkarna. Sankurnkarna. He celebrated several sacrifices in the Kuru Shetra pilgrimage site, and he had three younger brothers named Shrutasena, Ugrasena, and Bhimasena the second. He invaded Taksala, Ajanta, and he decided to avenge the unlawful curse upon his great father, Maharaj Pariksit. He performed a great sacrifice called the Sarpa Yagya to kill the race of snakes, including Taksaka, who had bitten his father to death. A request of the many influential demigods and sages, he had to change his decision to kill the race of snakes, but despite stopping the sacrifice, he satisfied everyone concerned in the sacrifice by rewarding them properly. In the ceremony, Mahara, Mahamuni Vyasadeva also was present, and he personally narrated the history of the battle of the Kurukshetra before the king. Later, on the order of Vyasadeva, his disciple Vaisapayanam narrated before the king the subject matter of Mahabharat. He was much affected by his great father's untimely death and was very anxious to see his father again, and he expressed his desire before the great sage Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva also fulfilled his desire his father was present before him and he worshipped both his father and Vyasadeva with great respect and pomp. Being fully satisfied, he most munificently gave charity to the Brahmins present at the sacrifice. Omagyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksun militam yena tasmai shri garavena maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Viranta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunya Vahari Pastyatya Dehi Satarine Panchakalpa Turu Vischa Pipa Sindhu Bebacha Titanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Rindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So we're being here, it's being described, <clears throat> some of the family members of Maharaj Parikshit, his wife and his uh, sons, cousin brothers, being described and <clears throat> mentioned. And here also we hear about Janame Jaya. <clears throat> it's described in the 12th canto of Bhagavatam when Janame Jaya learned that his father was killed by Toxica. He became extremely upset and at the same time quite angry. He was a powerful king, being the son of a powerful king also. And so he decided to uh, avenge his father's death by eliminating all the snakes everywhere. <laughs> so he had a Sarpa Yagya to... Uh, and by the power of that yagya, he, of course, he commissioned many powerful brahmanas. And by their pure chanting, snakes were flying from all over the world into the fire of the yagya. The demigods, headed by Brihaspati, 
became concerned that why should they kill all of the snakes of the world just because of one snake. Somehow Toxica <clears throat> was realizing what was happening. He was being pulled by the force of the yagya towards the, towards the yagya. <clears throat> and uh, being a very powerful snake, he took shelter of King Indra. And Indra protected him. <clears throat> And then Janme Jaya realized Indra was giving protection to the person who killed his father. So he increased the yagya to bring all the demigods into the fire. <laughs> and he won't. And he was pretty determined <laughs> to get it toxica. But somehow by the power of uh, Indra, he was able to, uh, what we say, repulse the effects of that yagya, and he still continued to give protection to that snake. But Brihaspati came and pleaded on behalf of all the demigods, you know, don't kill the demigods, don't kill Indra, don't kill anyone on the snakes. And, and he was somehow satisfied by Brihaspati. And because he immediately stopped on the request of Brihaspati, the demigods were very pleased, and they showered benedictions upon him. And at the same time, he worshipped them all, and also renumerated all of the sacrificial brahmanas. Now, he was a very pious and very, what we say, magnanimous king, and of course, the illustrious son of King Pariksit. Now, here's a little bit about his history. He mentions his sons also. We get a little insight. And he wanted to see his father again. And so by the grace of the demigods, they were able to bring it back. Grace of Vyasadeva, he, they brought back his father so he could get darshan of his father again. You can see the power of yagya nowadays because of the effects of Kali Yuga. And these powerful brahmanas don't exist anymore. <clears throat> Nowadays, the brahmanas are just, you know, <clears throat> more or less interested in some um, <clears throat> some remuneration for whatever sacrifices they perform. They perform a lot of yagyas, chant a bunch of mantras. Nobody knows what they're chanting, <laughs> and then they ask for dakshin. <laughs> So today's brahmanas, of course, we're talking about the, the brahmanas who are ritualistic brahmanas, those who make Brahminical culture their livelihood and want to make, what we say, yeah, a livelihood out of some kind of Brahminical chanting of the mantras. So although we perform many ceremonies with ritualistic brahmanas sometimes, we know that the power, the power they have is very little, especially in the age of Kali. Because even the mantras they chant are not perfectly. Because no one can chant the mantras according to the Rig and Sama Vedas perfectly in this age. <clears throat> so when Srila Prabhupada was opening the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan, he understood that the brahmanas and the priest, the head of the different uh, uh, temples in Vrindavan, the Mahants, many of them, wouldn't be satisfied if we simply had Kirtan to open the temple, which was, according to Srila Prabhupada's desire, because he understood simply by doing Harinam Sankirtan, all auspiciousness is there. Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nama Hoite Haya Sarva Jagat Nishtara. Krishna descends in the form of his holy name, and Lord Chaitanya has empowered Krishna's name with the, as the Yuga Dharma in this age to purify the entire existence, not only the world, but the whole universe. But Prabhupada wanted to do just Harinam Sankirtan as the opening ceremony for the installation of Krishna Balaram. But he understood that if he simply did that, they wouldn't recognize our temple as an authoritative temple. So he went through all of these yagyas. 
And he hired so many brahmanas, and they did all of the mantras and pujas and rituals. And Prabhupada was just waiting until it was over. <laughs> he was very impatient. And when it was over, he said, let's have kirtan. <laughs> so he did. So, you know, the, the, the yagi initiates is um, Krishna Varna Tusa Krishna Sangam Panga Saparshadam Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi Sumedasa. So this is the, in this age, the chanting of the holy name, especially in congregation, glorification of the Lord, is the most powerful form of worship which elevates both the worshiper and all those he hear. I remember we were in one um, uh, Rathiatra ceremony in the United Kingdom. It was actually the London Rathiatra one year. And the devotees come out in very large numbers for that. So sometimes we have like hundreds and hundreds of devotees and there's like three or four kirtans going on for the Ratha Yantra in different places among the parade. So there was one devotee leading very nicely one part of the parade. And one lady, and she was just a spectator on the side, and she came running over to the devotees. She was crying, I mean really crying. And she, she said, I can't stop crying, what are you chanting? <laughs> What is that song you're singing? <laughs> and she was just quite emotional in a very happy way. She was experiencing the mercy of the Holy Name. She had never before came in contact with the Holy Name. This was her first experience. But because she was somewhat ready to hear the mercy, she was, her heart just opened up and she was in ecstasy, shedding tears and expressing such great happiness. So yeah, so you can see the power of the Holy Name, it purifies not only the chanters, the devotees, not only people around. When Srila Haridas Dalkor said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how will the non-living, how will the, I'm sorry, how will the non-moving living entities become benefited? And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, no, actually, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, asked Hari Das Thakur, how will the non-moving living entities be benefited? And Hari Das Thakur responded by the loud chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So even the cockroaches and the flies and the unseen bacteria get mercy simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And this is the yagya in this age. So all well, these other yagyas, they have a place and then they, they also have some purpose, but actually simply by engaging in Harinam Sankirtan with enthusiasm, <coughs> one can purify everything the whole world, not to, what to speak. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu demonstrated that when he did Nagar Sankirtan in, in Navadweep, marching on the house of Chan Kasi, he organized a mass Sankirtan. Chan Kasi had come to uh, stop the Sankirtan movement that devotees had been chanting. And the Brahmanas there, it's interesting, Prabhupada mentions, it wasn't the Muslims, but it was the Brahmanas who were complaining that devotees were chanting. <laughs> they said, this is not our religion. You know, we're, you know, our religion is different. They, they're claiming this is the Hindu religion and they're chanting very loudly. And what they're going to do is by chanting so loudly, they're going to wake up Lord uh, Vishnu and he's going to get mad because they woke him up and he's going to destroy everything. Yeah, so that's what they were telling the Chan Kazi. So Prabhupada said that Chan Kazi was dutifully bound to respond to the complaints. So he came with his, his few of his soldiers and threatened the devotees. He said, if you don't stop, <clears throat> we're going to punish you. But they did it again. And then he came the second time and he smashed the drum and also threatened that he would burn down all the villages. <clears throat> but so the devotees got scared at that time and 
they stopped. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he was like the Shringadev. <laughs> he was so angry. He came into the house of Sri Thakur. He sat on the throne and he said, who is this Kazi anyway? Who does he think he is? Let him call all his muliks and all his priests and let them chant their mantras and they, they won't be able to do anything. And I'll simply chant and all the birds and animals and everything will dance it. <laughs> the Lord Chaitanya was like fire. And he said, let us now organize kirtan. It was in the evening. And so that, that, that evening, it's the way it's described by Vrindavan Das Thakur, millions, and so many millions, crores and crores of, of people came from all over the universe to join into that sankirtan. And they lit torches, and it was the dark part of the night where everything was dark. But when they lit their torches, it seemed like the sun had come out. <laughs> it was so bright, there were so many, so many devotees. And Lord Chaitanya was there dancing in front along with Lord Nityananda. And in another part of the day, there was uh, Advaita Chari and Gadadhar were also dancing. Srila Haridas Thakur was dancing, Sri Vas. It was a massive sankirtan, and Lord Chaitanya was enjoying the sankirtan. They were heading to the house of Chan Kazi. And during that time, everybody started to come out of their houses and join the sankirtan movement. It was really amazing. The whole town of Navadweep came out to join the, the Sankirtan movement. And the pre, and the, and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what is it? The thieves, they saw everybody's houses were empty, so they thought this is a good time to, to steal everything. But then when they went to steal everything, they got close to the Harinam Sankirtan, they forgot they were thieves and they joined the Harinam. <laughs> they couldn't stop. <laughs> And so this went on, and then when finally when Lord Chaitanya came close to the house of Chankasi, Chankasi was hiding under the, his bed. He was completely frightened. He sent some of his soldiers to find out what was going on. And they went out, and every time they got close to the Harinam Sankirtan, their beards would catch on fire. <laughs> and they would run back. And some of them, when they came back, they were also chanting. And they said, they said to the Kazi, we can't stop chanting. <laughs> Who is this Nimai Pandit? He's just turned the whole world upside down. <laughs> so. And then finally, when the Lord came to the house of Chan Kazi, he, he said, he called the Kazi to come out. And the Kazi wouldn't come out. Finally, the Lord was persistent. Finally, the Kazi came out. He was really frightened. He was shaking <laughs> in fear. And the Lord was very respectful and very kind to him, said he, you know, and he started speaking to him about religious principles. That's a nice discussion how it's explained how <clears throat> he was talking about cow killing. He said, in your scriptures, it says that, you know, it says the cow is our mother and the bull is our father. Why do you kill your mother and father? And uh, so Lord Chaitanya challenged him, and he was giving some bogus answer. <laughs> and the Lord defeated him in argument. That's a nice discussion. It's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But the entire uh, Leela is mentioned in 744 ver 745 verses in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Vrindavan Das Thakur gives a very detailed description of that Harinam Sankirtan. When you read that, you think you want to jump into the pages of the book and join the kirtan. It was so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> so this is um, Mahaprabhu's movement that has the power to change the whole world. So if we do Ham ha Harinam Sankirtan all over the world, then Kali Yuga, Kali will run in fear. <laughs> As soon as Mahaprabhu comes out with the holy name and all his devotees, and then Kali runs like a dog being chased by uh, um, his owner. And <laughs> no, this is the power of the holy name. It's, 
can purify everything is because it's Krishna himself. Hale Kale Nama Rupa Krishna. No difference between Krishna and Krishna's name. We all know that. So that is the yagya in this age. And whenever that yagya is being performed, every, all auspiciousness is present. Today is also, I think, the was it disappearance or appearance of Gopal Bhatta Goswami? Appearance day? Yeah. Okay. So one of the Bande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yago Sri Jiva Gopal Ago. Jai Sri Sri Rup Sanatan Bhattaraguna Sri Jiva Gopal Bhat Das Raguna Six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Gopal Bhatta Goswami. We don't know so much about because when Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami began writing the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Gopal Bhatta Goswami approached Krishna Das Kaviraj and said, don't mention my name, please. <laughs> he had in his natural humility, he didn't want to be known for whatever great activities he performed in devotional service. So very carefully, Krishna Das Kaviraj does mention his name in one place. Now, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, we, uh, we know that um, um, he traveled to the Gandaki River in the Himalayas. And when he was there, he collected some Shaligran Shilas and brought it back. And one of those Shilas later on became the Didi Raman, which is now in the temple in Vrindavan, the Radha Raman temple established by Gopal Bhatta Goswami and followed by his predecessors. So that deity was actually a Shila. He wanted to worship the Lord in the form of Archivigraha form. So after collecting those Shilas, one of the Shilas one of them turned into actually a deity of Krishna just to please his devotee. And that deity is very special. It's unique among deities because and it is the embodiment of the characteristics of the three main deities of Vrindavan, Madan, Mohan, Govindaji, and Gopinath. He has the feet of Madan, is the chest of Govindaji, and he has the face of Gopinath. <laughs> so that deity is very, very special. And people from all over go, especially to Radha Raman Temple. And that temple, the Goswamis of that temple have always been extremely favorable to the Srila Prabhupada's movement. Yeah, even way back, even before then, even before Srila Prabhupada uh, came, uh, when the uh, <clears throat> when even when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was there, there was one time I believe where some people were angry at his Sankirtan party and they were throwing rocks at the Sankirtan party, which was in Vrindavan. So they took shelter of Radha Raman Temple at that time and received protection. Is that correct? Or was it Govindaji Temple? I'm not sure. I think it was Radha Raman Temple. But even today, the devotees, the uh, Goswamis are very favorable. And they also travel and come to the West. We, man, we had, uh, what was his name? Padmanabh Goswami. He came, he was one of, he's the son of Vishwambar Goswami, who was a good friend of Srila Prabhupada. And he came to America and he traveled around different temples. I met him there and he was in the Chicago temple and he was preaching. So this temple has always been very, very progressive in their practice of devotion and very much favorable to the Sankirtan movement. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit about Gopal Bhatta Goswami. It's described that he was the original author of 
Hari Bhakti Vilas, but then it's explained he didn't finish the work and it was finished by Sanatana Goswami. But he started Hari Bhakti Vilas. And he also wrote about deity worship. There is also books on how to worship the deity. There's one story in one pattern or one of his, he had a, he he had disciples, not many, but he had a few disciples. One of his disciples came to him one time and was sitting in front of him with his legs pointed straight at his guru. He sat with his legs straight out facing his spiritual master. And he said, you're sitting like a bull. <laughs> Therefore, I curse you to become a bull. <laughs> so it's described like that. So yeah, these are just some stories of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. We don't have much. But it says that he was always chanting the holy name of the Lord and worshiping hmm, Raman, Radha Raman. Radha is not there in her manifested form, but she's there in an unmanifested form. <laughs> and even today in the deity of Raman, if you're able to see on the back of Raman, in the part of the Shila, which was the original manifestation, is still there. You can see as he manifested himself from the Shila, he actually left part of that Shila you can see it is on the back of Raman. Of course, unless you're doing the worship, you won't be able to say it, but anyway, it's there. <laughs> so these are some stories. <laughs> also, we have well, Kaviraj, Ramachandra Kaviraj is also appearance day, disappearance day. Oh. Of course, we don't, yeah, we don't really know his appearance day because he joined the Sankirtan movement after the disappearance of, um, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's a good friend. He was a good friend of Naratam Das Thakur and Srinivas Acharya. It says that him and Naratam Das Thakur were like uh, one soul in two bodies. <laughs> we sing, and there was a ha ha Prabhu, or how was it? Srinivasa, Ramachandra, Sangha Magi, Naro Tamadas, yeah. There's one story that we remember how he actually connected with Srinivasa Acharya. He, he was a side disciple of Srinivasa Acharya, where um, he was about to get married and he was in the marriage procession. And he was, you know, going along in the procession and Srinivas Acharya happened to be there watching. And he turned to one of his associates, Srinivas did, and he spoke. And something that he's about to put a noose around his neck. <laughs> referring to him about to get married. And he heard that. When he heard the, the statement by Srinivas that he was about to enter into a situation which, according to Srinivas Acharya, was, you know, death for that personality, he immediately gave up, didn't even get married that day, and, and went to find Srinivas. <laughs> And then, of course, after that, he became the disciple of Srinivas, and later he met Naradam Das Thakur, and he became very so close. He had a brother named Govinda Kaviraj, Bajahuremana, Srinanda Nandana, Abhaya Charana Vindare. Govinda Kaviraj is the one that wrote that bhajan, which is the favorite of all the brahmacharis. And, uh, Govinda Kaviraj was actually a worship of Durga Devi. <clears throat> and when he heard his brother 
had taken initiation into the Vaishnav culture, he became interested. And one day, Durga Devi appeared to Govinda Kari Raj in a dream and said, you should, you should also follow your brother, <laughs> take shelter of Krishna, become Vaishnava. So he got direct instructions from his. And then he wrote that beautiful song, Bajahu Raymana Sri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charanhara Vindu Ray Tulabha Manava Janama Satsange Abhaya Charanara Vindu Ray It's a song of lamentation how he wasted his life in working, slaving, wasting his life in material activities. Now, after becoming blessed by the mercy of the Vaishnava, he wakes up to his reality and he writes this beautiful song. Shravana Kirtana Smarana Bandana Padasevana Dasare I used to, day and night, I was working for greedy, malicious uh, masters, uh, suffering in the, in the heat, in the cold, rain and wind. He said, this life is like chapala sukala lagire. This life is like a drop of water on a lotus flower, on a lotus leaf on a lotus leaf. A lotus leaf has a waxy coating and if you put water on it, it doesn't stay, immediately goes off. He uses that as an analogy to say that this life is very quick. It's so fast. You, when you're first born, you're young, but time moves so fast. Even now we see we just think, wow, the days go so fast, the years can come and go. And life is short, <clears throat> especially in Kali Yuga. It says the maximum duration of life is 100 years, but who, how many people actually reached that level of age? So it is very short, very, very short. And so he describes that in his song. Therefore, he says, he, he emphasized the importance of using every bit of time uh, to worship the Supreme Lord in devotion. So that's the brother of uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj. Okay, so these are some points, a little bit about these two personalities, and also Janme Jaya and Maharaj Pariksit. Any comments or questions? Any points? <laughs> Vrindavan? Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna.